What if you have the equation x plus 2 times x minus 5, and that was equal to x minus 1 times x minus 3? Notice that there is an equal sign here, and there's x's on the left, and there's x's on the right. And I ask you, solve this equation for x. Now, if you don't have any idea what to do, it's totally understandable because you've never seen an equation like this before. So don't stress out about it. All of the previous equations that I've ever shown you, there was maybe some x's on the left and on the right, but then you, you, know, you add or subtract things, and your, your goal is to get x on one side and to get everything else on the other side. And then when you do that, you know what x is equal to. But here, x is wrapped up inside of these parentheses here, so it's hard to move x around. But when you see these binomials multiplied together like this, you immediately know you can multiply them. And what you're going to do is multiply and then expand everything, collect all of the like terms, and then move all of your x's off to one side, and then solve it. So this is an equation that requires you to multiply these binomials first. So x times x gives you x squared. Okay. And then x times negative 5 gives you negative 5x. And then uh, 2 times x gives you 2x. And then 2 times negative 5 gives you negative 10. Okay? And then you have an equal sign right here. And on the right-hand side, you're going to do the same thing. x times x gives you x squared. And then um, x times negative 3 is going to give you negative 3x. And then negative 1 times x is going to give you negative x. And then negative 1 times negative 3 is going to give you positive 3. All right, so you have the left and the right-hand side all together. Now your goal is to isolate x all by himself. Now it might scare you a little bit that you have an x squared, um, but don't. Uh, this is a specially constructed problem. You also have an x squared over here. So if I, my suggestion is just try to move everything to one side and see what happens. So we can subtract x squared from both sides. But if we do that, we're going to subtract x squared from the right, and then we're also going to subtract x squared from the left, right? That's what we would do if we were trying to move it over here. But if we, can, if we subtract it from left and right, it's just going to disappear from both sides. So you can either write it down as subtracting x squared, subtracting x squared, but at the end of the day, the x squareds are going to disappear because you have the same exact number or the same exact quantity on both sides of the equal sign. So they can, you can Think of them as sort of disappearing, but really what's happening is if you subtract x squared, it disappears here, and if you subtract x squared from the other side, which you have to do, because you have to do it to both sides, it disappears from there also. So really all you have is this on the left and this on the right. So we can add these together. Negative 5x plus 2 is negative 3x. We have the minus 10, right? And then on the right-hand side, we have negative 3 minus 1, which is negative 4x plus 3. Now the equation becomes something that you know how to solve. We can move the 4x over here, or we can move the 3x over there, however you want to do it. Let's add 4x to both sides, and that's going to drag him over there. So it would be negative 3x plus 4x on the left. And on the right, we're just going to have 3, because when we add 4x, he's going to go to 0 on that side, and then we add on this side, giving us negative 3 plus 4 is 1x, or x minus 10, is equal to 3. And now we can take the 10 and move them over there. How do we do that? By doing the opposite, by adding 10. So it'll be x is equal to 3 plus 10, or x is equal to 13. And that's the final answer, 13. And if you were to take 13 and stick it in here, 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 and do all the multiplication, you'd find out that the left-hand side and the right-hand side were completely balanced. All right? Now, let's move along and do the next problem. They're all going to be like this, by the way. All of these problems are going to behave exactly the same way. All right, the next problem is 2x minus 5 times x minus 4 plus... 2x times 1 minus x, and that's going to be equal to 0. So again, there's x's everywhere, so we start multiplying. 2x times this gives us 2x squared, because the x's add the exponents. 2x times negative 4, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, uh, and then we have x, which is just along for the ride. And then we have, we're done with this, so then we have negative 5 times x, which gives us negative 5x. And then we have negative 5 times negative 4, which is positive 20. So that's the, the first set of multiplications. Then 
we have the 2x, which just gets distributed times the 1, which is 2x, uh, like that. And then we have 2x times negative x, which gives us negative 2x squared, and that's equal to 0. Now we start trying to combine like terms, and we see right away that the 2x squared will cancel with the negative 2x squared. They just add to 0. And then what we have is negative 8 plus negative 5, or negative 8 minus 5, gives you negative 13, but then we also have a positive 2, so negative 13 plus 2 is going to give you negative 11x. And then we have the 20 here, plus 20, is equal to 0. So we've added all the like terms because we've added this to this to this, and then we just have the 20 going into there. So then now, to solve, we move the 20 to the other side. So it'll be negative 11x equals negative 20. We just subtract 20 from both sides. And then now to get the final answer, we can divide by negative 11. So um, x, because on the left-hand side, the negative 11 cancels here, is going to be, and negative on the right-hand side, negative divided by negative gives you positive. It'll be 20 over 11. So that's pretty much as far as you can go. I mean, you can convert that to a decimal or you can make it into a mixed number, but a fraction is perfectly fine because that's, that's the exact solution, 20 over 11. That's the final answer. All right, so we want to do one more problem just to get some practice with this. Um, let's say we have x minus 3 times x squared minus 2x plus 6 is equal to x times x squared minus 5, x plus 9. Now again, we have x's everywhere, so all we can do is start multiplying, then we collect terms. x times x gives you x cubed. Then we have x times negative 2x, which is going to give you negative 2x squared x times x gives you x squared. Then x times the 6 gives you 6x. Then we turn our attention to the negative 3. Negative 3 times this x squared is negative 3x squared. And then we have negative 3 times negative 2. Negative times negative is positive 6x. Okay? And then we have negative 3 times the 6, so 6 times 3 is 18, and it's a negative, so it's a negative 18, like this. Now, I don't have enough room to, to do the multiplication over here, so the way I suggest you do it is just go ahead and put your equal sign down below, and then do the multiplication here. x times x gives you x, or I'm sorry, x times x squared gives you x cubed. Then x times negative 5x is going to be negative 5x squared. Then x times 9 is going to give you 9x. All right, so now we start to combine like terms. On the left-hand side, we have an x cubed, and on the right-hand side, we have an x cubed. So really, we would try to combine them together, but the same thing happens. You subtract x cubed from both sides to try to move them over, but that's going to make 0 on this side and 0 on this side. So really, when you see the same thing on both sides, you can strike through it, because if you try to subtract the same thing from both sides, they disappear. So then we look and try to combine uh, additional like terms. We have the negative 2x squared here, and then we have the negative 3x squared, so those can be combined to, uh, let me switch colors here, to negative 5x squared. And then on the left we have the 6x and the 6x, those can be combined to 12x. And then we have on the left again negative 18, so we'll do negative 18. And on the right hand side we have negative 5x squared, um, let's see what did we have here, this is a plus. The plus, sorry, I forgot to write that down. That's just coming from when we multiply this times this, it gives you the 9x. The plus comes from right here. Okay, so on the right-hand side, again, continuing, we have um, plus 9x. All right, so then we look and say, well, how do we uh, combine these? Well, we have exactly the same term, negative 5x squared here, negative 5x squared there. That means that essentially we can strike through and cancel them because they would go to zero if we tried to combine them together. If I tried to get rid of this, I would add 5x squared to both sides. That would give me zero here and zero here. So they basically disappear. And all I have on the left is this. All I have on the right is this. So let's move the 9x over here by doing what? Subtracting 9x. So 12x minus 9x minus 18 is equal to zero. All I did was subtract 9x from the right, giving me 0, subtract 9x from the left, and I still have to do that subtraction. 12 minus 9 is 3x, 
and then you have minus 18 is equal to 0. Now we'll move the 18 over by adding 18. So we add 18 to the left, giving us 0. On the right, we just have 18. Now we can divide by 3, and x is going to equal to 6. And the answer is 6. That's the final answer. So I just wanted to do these problems to show you that sometimes when you have an equation and you're asked to solve, you may not have any idea how to possibly get to the answer. But if you start multiplying things together, um, uh, and collecting terms, a lot of times these, these things will disappear. And all you'll have left at this point in your learning of algebra, all that you really should have left is a nice simple equation like this that you already know how to solve. So if the x cubed, for instance, didn't cancel with the x cubed, then you probably made an error someplace in your multiplication. Um, and, and so at this point, you don't know how to solve any other equations other than this, so they should all fall away. And later down the road, much farther down the road, we'll learn how to solve more complicated equations. Um, but for now, anything that cancels, go ahead and take care of it. Collect terms, solve for the variable as usual. Make sure you can solve these problems and follow me on to the next section. We'll continue our journey through algebra. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.